Hi, this is Duncan Ferguson. In this unit, we're going to talk about uh, catecholamine synthesis, secretion, and metabolism, and the function of the adrenal medulla. Firstly, although it's not the role of this unit to uh, review the autonomic nervous system completely, it's useful to know that the adrenal medulla, we call it an endocrine gland in this uh, discussion, uh, is really a part of the larger sympathetic nervous system. And basically, so if we're looking at the areas in orange, uh, stimuli such as stress to the hypothalamus will then trace through the um, preganglionic nerves. And these are uh, innervated with acetylcholine, so they're nicotinic receptors. And then a secondary um, acetylcholine to the post uh, neuron to the postganglionic site, which is the adrenal medulla, and it's also a nicotinic receptor and acetylcholine that then stimulates uh, the release of the norepinephrine and epinephrine into the circulation. And so basically, the adrenal medulla is part of essentially a ganglion or, or the end effector of this part of the sympathetic nervous system. And of course, uh, these hormones or, or catecholamines, uh, neurotransmitters in circulation, can then stimulate the adrenergic uh, end, end effectors, which we'll discuss in more detail, so where they'll have effects on glands, smooth muscle, and on the heart, for example. So in this figure, we're showing the uh, histology on the left. So there's the adrenal medulla there, and a cartoon of it on, on the right. Uh, and remind you of the various hormones that are being produced. The ones we're going to focus on in this unit by the adrenal medulla are epinephrine and norepinephrine. And so you can see that the medulla is in the very center or core of the adrenal gland. It's also useful to note that it's very proximate to the blood vessel so that anything that's released uh, from the adrenal medulla will have rapid access to the circulation. So the adrenal medulla is, consists of what are called pheochromocytes, which are originate in the neural crest during development. And these are uh, basically known for their cell granules that turn brown. That's what pheo stands for in, in Greek. And, and when they're stained with chromic acid. And this is due to the oxidation of epinephrine and norepinephrine to melanin by that particular stain. Essentially, and this is the important physiological point, uh, the adrenal medulla is innervated by preganglionic fibers of the sympathetic nervous system. We already mentioned that the neurotransmitter here is ACH, acetylcholine, and this is a nicotinic receptor in this ganglion. And the adrenal medullary cells are essentially the equivalent of postganglionic cells of the sympathetic nervous system and they're producing um, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Let's we'll we'll call that norepi and epi. Because they stain with chromic acid, these, these cells have also been called the uh, chromaffin cells, and they, they contain uh, norepinephrine um, that's supplied uh, to the adrenal medulla, and, and yet there also is epinephrine and norepinephrine containing cells that have different types of granules, so they don't look this, quite the same because of the way they stain. Um, an important aspect for the, what we'll talk about uh, later in, a, in another unit on the adrenal medulla it, which is the stress response, the chromaffin cells have epinephrine, and that epinephrine and that enzyme that, that makes epinephrine from norepinephrine called phenylethylamine and methyltransferase is a cortisol or glucocorticoid stimulated enzyme. And so the, the fact that this, uh, these chromaffin cells get direct supply, blood supply from the adrenal cortex, uh, if you look at the previous slide, is very important. And it's also important to note that if an animal uh, is lacking glucocorticoids, they may not be able to make adequate amounts uh, 
of epinephrine and therefore sustain you know, appropriate responses that we'll talk about um, in the second unit about what epinephrine does during a stress response. Uh, this complex slide, uh, and we'll talk you through it, uh, is basically to show you the relationships between the uh, source of synthesis of all these catecholamines, which comes from either the amino acids phenylalanine or directly from tyrosine. Uh, actually, the a tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme is which which converts tyrosine to the initial precursor called uh, DOPA or dihydroxyphenylalanine is known as an enzyme to look for if you're trying to identify sympathetic neurons and sympathetic tissues. Um, but what I really want to focus on here are the close interrelated. Uh, chemical nature and also the synthetic steps leading from uh, the precursors, tyrosine, dopa, and then dopamine, and then its conversion to, uh, so dopamine and its conversion to norepinephrine, and then its subsequent conversion to epinephrine. And we talked about in the previous slide that th this step right here is uh, basically a stimulated by cortisol. So a little bit of detail about each of these, uh, so it helps us understand um, this process, is that uh, dopamine is also a precursor of norepinephrine. It's found both in the um, adrenal medulla and peripheral sympathetic nerves and is in high concentrations in the brain. And as we said, it's synthesized from tyrosine or from phenylalanine. And uh, its uh, synth synthesis intermediate is dopa. Uh, norepinephrine is found in the adrenal medulla, the central nervous system, and sympathetic ner nervous system, and you may have learned quite a bit about it in the context of its role in the central nervous system already. Um, and then epinephrine, which is uh, made only by the adrenal medulla, is made uh, in the conversion of norepinephrine to epinephrine in this glucocorticoid st uh, stimulated step. In most mammalian species, uh, we'll see that the epinephrine to norepinephrine ratios of secretion of the adrenal medulla will be somewhere between three to four parts uh, epinephrine to each uh, part norepinephrine. So this is what you see is a major output of the adrenal medulla is epinephrine. Just a little bit about the uh, enzymes that make these uh, key Catecholamines, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, the enzymes that tend to identify the neurons if you end up doing any work with uh, trying to identify these neurons in a research setting. Dopamine beta hydroxylase is found only in the neurons uh, and, in, uh, and in the granules where norepinephrine is synthesized, um, and it's basically taking dopamine and converting it to norepinephrine, whereas phenyl ethanolamine and methyltransferase, PNMT, is in, only in the medulla. Why? Because, and it's in the cytosol, because this is the enzyme that creates epinephrine. And it's interesting to note that uh, where norepinephrine uh, leaves its granule, and they have different granules, epinephrine and norepinephrine, uh, it then gets methylated, this is a basic step in the cytosol, and enters a different granule as we said, that has slightly different histological appearance. Um, and so there are separate epi and norepi granules. So after synthesis, the uh, catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine we'll focus on, are stored in, uh, with ATP uh, in what are called chromogranins. Uh, the, the norepinephrine granules, the stores there, are constant generally because the synthesis is coupled to the secretion uh, and so it's constantly being replenished whereas the stores of epinephrine can be depleted and this can occur for instance during prolonged hypoglycemia where the animal is trying to respond to that hypoglycemia with release of epinephrine to stimulate uh, for instance glycogenolysis uh, to produce more glucose these granules can be depleted and essentially exhausted.
So what happens when the hypothalamus uh, decides that the organism needs to be, or the animal needs to be um, responding to a stress? And remember, the sympathetic nervous system is a diffuse system, and so it sends its uh, signals through uh, preglanglionic fibers, uh, releases acetylcholine, and these then look for nicotinic um, receptors in the ganglia that lead to depolarization and calcium influx, and then the exocytosis, in, the, in this case in the adrenal medulla, in the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine. During uh, this exocytotic process, all of the granular contents are released into the extracellular space, and uh, essentially the release of stored catecholamines is immediate. This would make sense from a you know, teleological standpoint. Uh, why have something to respond to a stress if it cannot do so and instantaneously. In this cartoon, I want to show you a sympathetic neuron, uh, an adrenergic neuron. And basically, uh, within the neuron, and we talked about some of the synthetic pathways, uh, and this is the same within the adrenal medulla, um, you have the release of, uh, in the case of a neuro, if it's a neurotransmitter, it's norepinephrine, or it could be epinephrine if the postsynaptic tissue is at a greater distance. But what I want to focus on in, in this slide is how does the action of the uh, catecholamine end? Well, the first thing it can do is once it's bound to the receptors on the postsynaptic tissue, whatever that effector site is, of course, they can then you know, come off the receptors. The other possibility is that the there are there is a reuptake process. Okay, so uh, the catecholamine, uh, norepinephrine, or or epinephrine can be moved back and taken back up by the by the tissue and uh, then reprocessed. Well, how does it get reprocessed? It's processed by an enzyme, uh, monoamine oxidase. It can be sometimes put back in the granules, but it also uh, can be processed and, and metabolized and have its effect ended by monoamine oxidase. Another pathway for metabolism is through the process of the postsynaptic tissue and an enzyme called catecholamine O-methyltransferase, which produces norepinephrine. And I mentioned both of these because, um, these enzymes, because in, they are key to the metabolites that one might use, uh, for instance, measuring uh, catecholamine excess in the, in the urine, these would be met metabolites. The deaminated derivatives of norepinephrine or norepinephrine uh, would be found in the urine. And in addition, we have uh, drugs that target particularly the monoamine oxidase in an attempt to increase the amounts of both norepinephrine and dopamine in the nerve terminal in conditions where we think these neurotransmitters are reduced. So to summarize, termination of the action um, includes both dissociation of the catecholamine from its receptor as well as metabolism. Uh, uh, the dissociation can then lead to that uh, catecholamine being taken back up by specific transporters into the nerve terminal. Uh, into the presynaptic nerve terminal, and then they can also be metabolized by two enzymes, and these occur in a variety of tissues, so the circulating epinephrine is also going to be exposed to this, um, and these are two enzymes, catecholamine methyltransferase and monoamine oxidase. The half-life of catecholamines, you can imagine, uh, are, is very, very short because of the stress, and you want so that, that material Coming out has to act rapidly. It also has to be um, act and end rapidly in order for this to be a rapid acting system. And so th this slide is really just a summary of the, the metabolism of epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. And you can see that in all cases, the both enzymes, uh, monoamine oxidase and catecholamine O methyltransferase are involved in the metabolism. And the, the, the compounds that you would find in the orange are those that you could measure in plasma or urine. Uh, you can imagine that measuring things in plasma would lead to 
quite fluctuating results if you just take one sample, whereas the urinary metabolites can be much, very useful to us in terms of establishing uh, the amount of, ex if there's excess uh, production of these catecholamines, say, in a tumor producing uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, an adrenal medullary tumor, we might want to measure urinary uh, metabolites to get a, get a better sense about whether they're excess, excessive or not. Uh, however, nonetheless, plasma measurements are also done uh, for this diagnosis. So in summary, adrenal medullary cells are like postganglionic cells of the sympathetic nervous system. They are the postganglionic cells, and of course they're producing epinephrine uh, and norepinephrine. Dopamine is also there as a precursor in the adrenal med medullary cells, and they're all products of tyrosine or secondarily phenyl phenylalanine. It's important from the stress response standpoint, to appreciate that the conversion of norepi to, to epi is glucocorticoid stimulated. And so it becomes necessary for adequate glucocorticoids to be present in order for an animal to mount an epinephrine response, for example. The stores of norepinephrine are constant, but those of epinephrine can be depleted. And for instance, in hypoglycemic, chronic hypoglycemic conditions. And the action of catecholamines, this is at the, uh, the site where they would work, is terminated by dissociation from the receptor, reuptake into the nerve terminal by transporters, and metabolism by the enzymes monoamine oxidase and catecholamine O-methyltransferase.